Good morning, everyone. It is 8 o'clock. We thank you so much for joining us here for Take Two. Kelly and Christine here. Time to break down the top stories of the day. Well, the holidays can be stressful enough and stolen mail can make it worse. And especially with Black Friday and Cyber Monday just days away, there are steps that you should take to keep your holiday packages out of the hands of thieves. Natalia Verdina has some tips. Some bubble wrap, tape, and a sturdy box. Maria Cruzado has it down to the T. With the holidays right around the corner, she's been busy getting packages shipped out. We're getting flooded. Like, it's getting flooded. People will have to wait in line. Every box secured with care. Inside, someone's belongings that have somewhere to be. We ship hundreds of packages a day. Postal services get the job done delivering millions of packages to every corner of the country every day. But police are warning people about the thieves who are on the prowl, poaching packages from people's doorsteps. This guy was arrested Tuesday. According to Tampa police, he hit at least five homes. The problem is that uh, the thieves know that you're going to have some packages delivered to your house. They know this is the time of year. So we're trying to warn people about what they can do to prevent it. You can have packages delivered to your place of work or to a neighbor's house if you know they'll be home. And stay on top of tracking numbers to know when mail will be delivered. We always recommend signature required because it means that the driver cannot leave the package. You can also tell UPS drivers where you want them to leave your packages. If you think your shed or behind the garage are safer locations, let them know for future reference. If a package is stolen, be sure to call police. I think sometimes they're very disappointed when they open them because it might just be a pair of pants that doesn't fit you. But as we've seen, these thieves are willing to take the chance. Well, the number of people killed in California's deadliest wildfire has increased to 77. And roughly 1,000 more are still unaccounted for in Northern California. Rain in the forecast this week could be both helpful and a hindrance in the fight against those wildfires. The wet weather could cause flooding or even severe and potentially deadly mudslides. It could also complicate the search for remains in the devastating campfire by turning the ash into a thick thick paste. In the southern part of the state, winds around the Woolsey Fire are expected to pick up today, which has the possibility of reversing the progress made. Very, very difficult to fight fire against. Because it's moving through the air, uh, Mother Nature carries it wherever the wind blows. Fire officials expect to have full containment on the Woolsey Fire by Thursday, and the campfire is estimated to be contained by next Friday. And this next story has brought a lot of people to our website. k 2 has confirmed that UFC flyweight Wayanai's Rachel Ostovich has been hospitalized after being the victim of an assault over the weekend. However, sources did not reveal details of this incident. The 27-year-old is scheduled to face Paige Van Zant at the UFC's debut event on January 18th in Brooklyn. Again, this story is developing. We'll bring you more details as they come in. Well, a wedding and prom staple has announced its plans to file for bankruptcy. David's Bridal made that announcement on Thursday. The company's CEO released a statement saying the retailer has, quote, announced a plan to financially restructure David's Bridal. Nearly $400 million in debt could be removed after Chapter 11 bankruptcy is filed. David's Bridal currently has over 300 stores, one being in Pearl City. The retailer plans to keep all of the stores open during the restructuring as well as complete dress orders and alterations. In Waipahu, the public got an up-close look at one of Honolulu's newest rail cars. Hart held a train day yesterday, an open house at its rail operations center. Eventually, where there will be 20 of these 260-foot long trains in the fleet, Hart says its target date for interim service between Kapolei and Aloha Stadium is late 2020 with full operation in the year 2025. Well, completing a marathon is quite an accomplishment on its own, but imagine doing it at 92 years young. Yeah, well, that's exactly what Gladys Burrell did about eight years ago. And now she's celebrating her 100th birthday. A special celebration went down in Waikiki over the weekend. She is turning 100 years old on Friday, but her party was yesterday. She's still listed as the oldest woman to finish a marathon in the Guinness Book of World Records. That was back in 2010.
Well, there are so many things that I managed to do. I, that uh, they were all real special. I climbed mountains and swam <laughs> and piloted a plane and, and of course a marathon, which is real special to me. Gladys still walks regularly. She also has never taken a drink of alcohol or smoked. She doesn't watch much television and likes to wake up early. So there's the secret. So congratulations <laughs> and happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. All right, coming up next with Thanksgiving just three days away, we're getting you ready. There will be a lot of food and a lot of eating. We get food safety tips from an expert live when Take Two returns. Welcome back. Well, if you're in charge of the main dish on Thanksgiving, not to worry. We have Peter Oshiro here from the Department of Health mm -hmm. to give us tips on how to have a safe Thanksgiving when it comes to food safety. Good morning. Welcome back. Oh, good morning. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for being here because very important food right. safety. There's so much yeah. food that's going to be prepared, of course, right. eaten. What do we need to know even before we start cooking? Yeah, the first thing is going to start with your shopping. So make sure that when you go shopping, separate all your raw food items from stuff that you're going to eat right away. So make sure the pork, the turkey, the um, pork, your chicken, your beef are all separate from your sashimi and your vegetables and salads that you're not going to cook. So it starts really there. When you go home to start cooking, main thing you're in good health that's the really the most important thing mm -hmm. if you're sick please don't prepare food for others mm -hmm. wash your hands thoroughly as you go between cooked and raw foods that's really really important too so and as you're prepping food keep the things that you're going to prepare your raw foods on top completely separate again from things that are going to be eaten without cooking like your salads your sashimi your pokey all that kind of things yeah maybe so in a different a really area or something. correct right. that's the best idea then you won't make mistake cross contaminating each other yeah and get a pocket thermometer. This is so important because you don't know what temperature you're cooking things until mm -hmm. you actually check this. So you cook your poultry 265 degrees and then you don't have to worry about getting salmonella or other food. Right, you can't just eye it and think Correct. like, okay, it's ready, right? Especially if you didn't thaw it well all the way through, then it's really important that you start with a thawed bird. So if you haven't done so already, get your bird out, get it in your refrigerator and start thawing it. Yes. Speaking of a thawed yes. bird, what <laughs> do we need to know if we're in charge of making the turkey? Well, again, really important thing is to don't stuff it and then cook it make sure you always bake it without stuffing inside that mm -hmm. way it cooks thoroughly and again you're really going to want to get a thermometer and not only does this um, prevent you from getting food illnesses from a culinary standpoint checking the temperature of the turkey also prevents you from overcooking it so you won't have a dry bird if you cook it to 165 degrees so that's really important and then when you're all finished eating um, after about an hour or so make sure you start putting all the foods away and the best way to do that is put it in shallow pans or Ziploc bags, and that's the most efficient way to cool food items. And you can thaw a turkey in the microwave. Yes, you can. Okay. It's part of your normal cooking process. So mm -hmm. if that's, you're in a rush, um, you can thaw it and then cook it right after. Yeah. So again, those temperatures, beef, veal, lamb, and fish, at least 145 yes. degrees. Ground beef, at least 155. Correct. Turkey, chicken, other poultry and stuffed foods, at least 165 yes. degrees. Okay. Yeah, and that's really important because that's the only way you know that you're going to kill off all the pathogens, and that will prevent you from getting sick. Yeah. What should you keep in mind when storing the foods? Again, make sure it's in the refrigerator. Check the temperature of your refrigerator also. It should mm -hmm. be at 41 degrees or below. So again, food should cool down rapidly. So make sure you don't put whole huge slabs of meat inside the refrigerator slice it thinly first. Um, best thing to do is put it in shallow containers or Ziploc bags and put it in your refrigerator right away to freeze, to cool down. And, and if, yeah, if you're not going to eat it in uh, two or three days, freeze it. Right, go ahead and freeze it already. Yeah. And Thanksgiving for many of us, it's right. an all day, all night right. event, right? Yes. So what is the two hour rule? Yeah, people like to leave foods out all day and <laughs> night in Hawaii. And you know, especially if you're outdoors where it's warm in mm -hmm. the middle of the day, you really got to be careful. So once people are finished eating, put things away, put it back in the cooler, put it back in the refrigerator, and that prevents bacteria from growing. Because Hawaii is a so ideal temperature year round for bacterial growth in food. 
What about now? Because people might think, oh, it's getting right. chillier, or I'm going to turn my AC on. Does that make a difference? You know, it helps very little, but again, what's going to save you is actually refrigerating it or cooling it down immediately. Yes. And then just taking it out again. Right. And make sure if you're going to eat it again, people like to eat things cold, but mm -hmm. it's a good idea to always reheat things rapidly to 165. So microwave, stovetop are the best ways to reheat things. Yeah. And a lot of us, we have poke or maybe right. neck salad. So okay. maybe put it on ice or in the chest. Well, chest. again, if you've taken care of it, um, you've not left it out very long and mm -hmm. you put it away right away right away then it's still okay to eat and maybe it took like one to three days max yeah, in the refrigerator before you throw things out yeah all righty thank you so much peter or from the department no of health Thanks because we want to have a yummy but safe That's thanksgiving right, right? Thanks. all right happy thanksgiving peter thank you too bye bye Thanks. All right, we'll break down the stories you need to know about today. That's coming your way next here on Take Two. Plus, speaking of Thanksgiving, too much leftovers? Or are you just planning a small feast? How about having a tiny turkey instead? We'll explain up next. You're watching Take Two. back. It is 8.15. Here are the stories you need to know for today. A man accused in a deadly shooting in Haula is expected in court today. Vincent Burdett is charged with murder and firearm offenses. A lane will be closed in both directions on the H3 freeway today and tomorrow for the filming of a movie. The Lanai lookout along Kalani on Ole Highway is also closed. Meanwhile, the entire Everbound side of the H1 will be closed overnight in Kapolei for concrete pouring. This will run from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. And parts of Pahoa District Park will reopen today. The entire facility is undergoing repairs after being used as a temporary evacuation center during the volcanic activity earlier this year. Repairs are expected to wrap up next year. And for today's weather, setting up to be a nice day. We have a lot of sunshine and strong trade winds. Starting out the morning with really beautiful conditions, a gorgeous live shot out towards Diamond Head. But the one thing that's different this morning, which we've seen all week long is since last Monday, is we don't have the high clouds with us any longer and we're not expecting to. Big Island, different story. You guys still have some of those streaming over you, but not for much longer. Those are moving on their way out along with the weakening trough that delivered us those high clouds. So this is a look at the current conditions and it's really comfortable. Right now, just 76 degrees. We started out for the most part in the lower 70s, upper 60s for much of the state and trade winds are here and dominating our weather pattern. Northeasterly winds just clocked in at eight miles an hour, but humidity, whew, when it dips down in the 60s, it feels very nice 67 percent humidity so this is what's happening on the bigger picture we have an area of high pressure that's to the northwest of the state that's continuing to push east but actually forecast to sink further to the south and as it nears the state it is going to be weakening but it's going to be so close to us that we're actually going to be seeing the pressure gradient tighten up so winds forecast to be even stronger it looks like late tomorrow night into wednesday so winds kicking up even a notch further or even more so than our already breezy conditions. Now, in terms of rainfall, not seeing much. We do have a very dry, stable atmosphere in place. However, we are expecting still some passing windward mocha showers, which we're seeing a couple of, but as you can see, it's pretty dry across the state this morning, and we have a lot of sunshine, and that's, again, the theme of the day. So beautiful conditions, trades dominating our weather pattern and keeping things comfortable. Winds just clocked in at 20 miles an hour in Lihue, 12 for Molokai and Kahului, 18 mile an hour winds in Lanai City. So when the winds are up, humidity, levels are down, things are comfortable, but also the windward showers that we do see some of those could get kicked over to the leeward sections just due to the fact that they are on the stronger side. So for the next two days, our trade winds are going to be blowing up to about 25 miles an hour. But again, as that high pressure system nears us on Wednesday, winds up a notch further, so they're going to be nice and windy. And Thanksgiving, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for the winds. They start off nice and strong, but as of right now, forecast models are showing them easing off by Thursday into Friday and then potentially gone by the weekend. Well, in a trend that goes against all the traditional indulgence of Thanksgiving, more people are actually buying smaller turkeys on purpose. Wait, what? <laughs> so we have Teresa Prilo to explain what, what this means. <laughs> Millennials make less money than their parents, <laughs> so they can't afford the big turkeys anymore. Back in the day, a scrawny Thanksgiving bird was considered a fair criticism during a holiday that glorifies gluttony. Now it's apparently a point of pride. For Friendsgiving, we probably won't go for a big bird. I didn't buy a big turkey, not planning to buy one as well. 
it's there's too few of us and it would be too much. According to Bloomberg, tiny turkeys are all the rage. That is smaller than 15 pounds. And if you're wondering why, blame millennials. The small turkey um, is really all about the size of our families, the changing in traditions. Russ Whitman studies these kinds of things for the market analysis company Erner Barry. He says it's not just about the smaller family. The smaller bird is also the result of millennials wanting to reduce food waste and also their quest for farm to fork food. That is, knowing that their turkey was allowed to roam free before it was slaughtered, which often leads to a smaller bird. The change in demand, the, the kind of sway towards the lighter birds, that keeps, that puts the heavier bird out in the cold. And the industry has recognized that. And what, what they've done on a uh, year to date basis is they've actually reduced the number of toms which are being slaughtered by about 3%, which is pretty significant. If you look at Department of Agriculture numbers, inventories of whole hens, which are female and smaller, are down 8.3% from a year ago. Whole toms, the males, are up 6.9%. More bird being left on the shelf and on the farm than in your fridge for post-Black Friday shopping nourishment. Okay, so here's my one big question with this whole story. Without the big turkey, you don't have as many leftovers. And doesn't that mean that you actually have to cook all weekend long? Who wants to do that? That just seems like a lot of extra work. Reporting on the Upper West Side, Teresa Priolo, Fox 5 News. And speaking of turkeys, it can be a lot of pressure when it comes to cooking a perfect Thanksgiving feast. There's a lot that can go wrong with so much food expected on the table, so we're asking you at home a fun question to answer on our Wake Up Today Facebook page. We want to know, what do you think is the biggest challenge when it comes to cooking Thanksgiving dinner? I'm sure all of you home chefs struggle with at least one dish that you maybe don't are afraid that might not cook perfectly. Mm -hmm. So we posted the question. Again, it's on our Wake Up Today Facebook page. Leave a comment. We'll share all your Thanksgiving troubles here on Take Two. We have some comments already. Okay, so Tracy says the most challenging part of cooking Thanksgiving dinner is doing the dishes <laughs> afterwards. She says no one wants to get off the couch and I have to wash and clean the kitchen. Especially the big pots and the big trays. That's yes. why you try and do a lot of paper plates and those disposable cooking trays. Right. All right, Leigh Bortma says, growing up, I always watch my mom struggle with flipping the bird over, many times watching it almost slide out yeah. of the oven. LOL for me, I just cook it in the bag. No flipping and it comes out perfect. All right, Candace says, it's trying to rinse the turkey out before starting to season the turkey. Then later, it's trying to carry the turkey out of the oven. Then after it's all the cleaning up you have to do and pack the food away when all you want to do is sleep after eating the turkey. Mike K. Kelly says, thawing the turkey. Oh, yes, I already put mine in my fridge. I put it in the fridge on Saturday. All right, Tiffany Mariota says, cooking, just cooking. <laughs> just cooking, period. Everything. Yes. <laughs> and for you, I go, you made your first turkey last year, right? Mm -hmm. Or is this? So this is year three now. Year three. Yes, and so I'm once again doing a turkey and a ham. Mm. Ham's a little bit easier, but I don't know. It, the turkey's really not that hard. So we had that Foodland segment at Ala Moana. Mm -hmm. We did that last year too, and so I just pulled up k22.com. <laughs> I followed the chef's instructions perfectly, and it's really not that hard. You just stuff in some celery, the lemon, the carrots, and oil, salt, pepper. That's, That's it. That's it? Oh, I mean, I'm sure there's more you can do to have a more delicious turkey. Mm -hmm. Like flipping it, I heard that that's more juicy. To flip over yeah, the bird. Yeah, because then we, we looked it up right, because I've never it. flipped a turkey. But I don't know. Never know. I, right. It turns out great. Well, we'll see. All what right. about you? Do you have a thing you're afraid of? Okay, this is a trick question, Kelly, okay. because I'm not going to lie. And I know if my parents or and other family members are watching, they know that I don't cook. So there's no, Anything. you know, yes, yeah, real frustration. <laughs> so I've got to admit, you know, I am appreciative though, but when it comes to turkey and frustrations, I leave it up to the pros. And if I bring something, it's something that's, that's bought. Not hey, going to lie. That's just fine. If it's yes. bought, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ruin anyone's Thanksgiving by trying to make something. And then you're still bringing over those french fries, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Centerpiece, right, you said? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, well, coming up next on Take Two, a new teppanyaki restaurant is heading to Waikiki. After the break, we're cooking up something delicious with Rocky Japanese Steak. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, a new teppanyaki restaurant has just opened in Waikiki. Here with all the delicious details, we have Thomas Top, Chief Chef at Rocky Japanese Steak Teppan Restaurant, and Mark Tateishi. Good morning, you guys. Oh, good morning. And Mark, General Manager. All right, so this is a brand new restaurant. Yes. Tell us all about it. Well, we're a teppanyaki restaurant. We still have the chef performing at the table and also uh, cooking your meal right in front of you. Okay. Uh, we have a new menu. We wanted to blend uh, some um, items from Asia to Americas, and uh, we have things such as hamburgers, teppanyaki sushi, Japanese burritos, and of course, okonomiyaki. Oh, wow. So it really is kind of a fusion then. Yes. Very neat. Okay, so what's the story behind your name, Rocky? Well, it's named after uh, Rocky Aoki. Uh, we call him the father of teppanyaki. He introduced this type of cooking to America over 50 years ago. Okay, and Chef, you're going to be cooking something up for us. Yes, what are we doing uh, today? We're going to cook up some uh, sushi. Yes. And we call this uh, yaki sushi or tempan sushi. So first item is we're just going to sear it. Okay, yeah, we'll perfect. Sear it real fast. Oh, and salmon is my absolute favorite, so I'm so stoked you're starting out with just this. Going to sear it real fast. All right. So yeah. while you're cooking this, what are some of your signature menu items? Um, we do, we have a new craft cocktail. It's called a Ninja Teeny. Ooh. It's a uh, Grand Marnier, cranberry juice. It has blueberries in it and it's poured over dry ice. It gives this really smoky effect to it. And we top it off with some sparkling wine. Okay, oh, that sounds delicious. And what about kind of signature food items? Signature food items would be the uh, teppanyaki sushi here yes. that Tom's making. And I feel like that's so unique. It, it is. Yes, I don't believe anyone yeah. else is doing this right now. Yeah. Super neat. Okay, so you guys have a good variety too. Check out the fish we have here. We have salmon, ahi, some ebi, scallops, and is that beef? Yeah, oh, you know beef. your Ooh. seafood items, huh? <laughs> oh, I do. I'm telling you, I am a big sushi fan. Oh, you got some scallops here, scallops sea scallops. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so when people come out, what what is the vibe of the restaurant? Uh, it has a lot of energy because, you know, people are there, they're clapping, they're having a good time, and, you know, the chefs are there too. They're the stars of the show. Right, so the, it's all the entertaining when they do the tricks and have so much fun. So it's not only delicious food, but it's also a really good time. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So, Chef, yes. can you do any of the tricks? <laughs> oh, yes. Wow. Well, I'll just put in there my we pocket. No, <laughs> no, not in your pocket. That's supposed to go in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? One, two. Three. No, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, that would be very entertaining, though. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to show off too yeah. much, though, right? You know. Oh, I'm sorry. Two-second rule. <laughs> Two-second rule, exactly. Ooh, oh, you're topping off the scallop with the shrimp. Yeah, with the shrimp. Wonderful. Okay, and so where are you guys located? We're inside of the Hilton Hawaiian Village yeah, Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on Kalia Road. Oh, sorry. And uh, <laughs> we open for lunch from 11:30 to two. Dinner okay. is five to ten. Okay, 11.30 to 2, dinner 5.30 to 10. Yes. And then you guys are brand new. Yes. Are, are you already open for those full hours? Uh, yes, we are. Perfect. So make sure you head on out. Again, this is a brand new restaurant. When did you guys open? Uh, it was last Friday. Just last Friday. So make sure you check it out. Again, delicious menu items with fusion. You got great sushi, but also we're going to be cooking up another dish in just a bit. What is right. that? Uh, okonomiyaki. Ooh, we have did okonomiyaki. You, did you want to explain that? Time? We'll, we'll oh, be talking okay. about that in the next <laughs> oh, segment. Sure. But as you can see, oh, take a look. Beautiful dish. Thanks so much, Chef. All right, we're going to, again, have so much more coming up in just a bit. But coming up next, high school baseball players from Japan and Hawaii took part in a Goodwill tournament. Find out their lessons learned on and off the field when we come back. An annual tradition with a mission of healing wrapped up in Manoa over the weekend. High school baseball teams from Hawaii and Fukushima, Japan, took part in a two-day international goodwill tournament. This was the third year of the event. It was started as a way to help heal following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Organizers hope the players will take their positive experiences here in Hawaii and pass it on to folks back home. It's very fun and it's actually very worthwhile. You know, they, they do a little bit of homestay and then they have this tournament and they get to talk to other high school students. So um, 
I, I think it really, you know, it's going to be a turning point in a lot of their lives. Organizers say sports can bring cultures together and is a great way to overcome adversity. Well, friends, relatives, and fans are mourning a legendary musician from a legendary family. The award-winning master of slacky guitarist Cyril Pahinui died Saturday night at the age of 68. As Sarah Madison tells us, people who knew Pahinui say he embodied what Hawaiian music is all about. <laughs> Music was in his blood. As a child, Cyril Pahinui was surrounded by a family of musicians, learning from his father, the great Gabby Pahinui. He listened to his father, Sonny Chillingworth, and, and Otto. They were just kanikapila jamming in the backyard, and, and um, he fell in love with the music, and he started to cry as a young boy, and he said, that is what I'm going to do with my life. And his first love always is his music, it wasn't long until Cyril found his own voice and unique style, mastering the 12-string guitar. You know, I have a saying that I live by, if it's from the heart, it reaches the heart. That's exactly what he did to all of us. When he played and he sang, he reached our heart. Because we knew it was from his heart. His gift and passion launched an admirable career with album records and collaborations with many well-known artists. Family members say the slack he mastered spread Hawaiian music throughout the nation, making it more visible and accessible. And he's been recognized for it with Grammy and Nahoku Hanohano Awards. Whenever he sang, you could tell he was singing about what he believes in, you know, and, and that's not, not very many people have that, you know, that kind of a, um, way of, a spiritual way of expressing yourself, you know. I mean, everybody can sing the same song, but they can't sing it like Cyril sings it, you know. Loved ones will remember him as a gentle man who loved his family and making others happy through his music. Cyril was quiet and reserved, but his music spoke for himself, and he generously shared it with everyone. He teaches. Many of his students uh, he teaches with no charge, and um, he, we raised uh, funds for five years to teach. He always shares aloha with people, gains support for the culture, for the music, um, by sharing and being generous and open. And, and he's, you know, carried the music around the world, literally. Sarah Madison, KHON 2 News. Such a beautiful voice. Well, Sarah Pahinui was about to release the next album in the next two weeks. We're told that CD will be released as scheduled. No word yet on possible memorial services or funeral arrangements, but we'll keep you posted. All right, coming up next, we rejoin the chefs from Rocky Japanese Steak. We'll be cooking up more new items when Take Two returns. You're watching Take Two. Welcome back to Take Two. It's time for our healthy moment of the day. To take a look at this picture, you're looking at the HHSAA cheerleading champs, the state cheerleading champs. The girls from Sacred Hearts Varsity cheerleading team took first place over the weekend. They competed in the medium division. Sacred Hearts has been on a roll this year, snagging other championship titles. Great work, ladies. How amazing is that? Well, remember, you could also be featured on our next Healthy Moment of the Day. Just send us a photo or a video by emailing it to take2 at kh12.com or leave a comment on our Wake Up Today Facebook page. All right, well, we're back in studio with Rocky Japanese Steak Tip on Restaurant. They're brand new in Waikiki, and oh, we are talking delicious, delicious food and something so unique. All right, Chef, what are you doing over there right now? Uh, we're making the okonomiyaki. It's called Japanese pancake. Mm -hmm. And so what is all in it? What are you topping it off with um, right now? We're too? topping off with uh, um, uh, katsuo bushi. It's a bonito flake. Yeah. Oh, and we have some uh, okonomiyaki sauce over there. And aonori, that's the uh, seaweed. Okay. And then some little mayonnaise here. And uh, benishoga. That's the ginger. Wonderful. Yeah, so this is something that you order. Would this be cooked right in front of you? or is Yes, it will be cooked Ooh. right in front of you. And is it usually that size? Yes. That's big. 
That's a generous yes, portion. For, and yeah. then served with some ginger as well. Yeah, is that ginger, what that is? Yes, mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. Okay, and then you also had finished cooking off your teppan right. sushi. Right. What did you top it off with? Okay, with the salmon here, we topped it off with the ter- um, tartar sauce with fuku jinzuke. Okay? Mm-hmm. It's a little pickle there. And uh, this is seared uh, ahi with um, ginger, sesame oil, and green onions. Oh. And this is scallops, shrimp with yum yum sauce. It's, we call it the yum yum sauce here. Yum. And, um, yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some seared steak here with uh, teriyaki sauce, homemade Rocky's teriyaki sauce, and little green onions there. Okay, yeah. that all sounds amazing, but also look at how beautiful that is. It's almost too pretty to eat, but when it's sushi, I'm eating it regardless. Okay, so tell us more about Rocky Japanese Steak, because again, you guys just opened, and I hear you're doing a really special deal right now. Can you tell us about that? Sure. And you guys, <clears throat> listen up. This is amazing. So if you go to www.rocky.com, we have a flyer. <clears throat> Take a screenshot of that. Bring that over to the restaurant at 5 o'clock p.m., I'll be the first one of 50 people in line, and you'll receive 50% off your meal. Wow, and that's incredible. And that's going to be running through how long? Uh, until December the 9th. Until December 9th. Oh, my God. I'm going to be one of those people. I'm going to print out one of those flyers. That's such a great deal and such an amazing opportunity for everyone to be able to head on out and see what you guys are all about because, again, brand new restaurant. All right, Chef, what are you most excited about with this new restaurant, with this fusion? There's some different dishes, right? Yes, there's, um, we have our or, or original tempanyaki um, menus, and we got some little burritos also. Ooh. Yeah, it's a Mexican burrito. You know, but with some, a twist, right? I hear you guys do twist. like a shrimp tempura burrito, right? Oh, yes, we do that. Oh, too. that's yes. incredible. Okay, so make sure you head on out. Again, this is Rocky Japanese Steak. This is in the Hilton Hawaiian Village. That's correct. Yes. Okay, and then your hours one more time? Uh, lunch is 11.30 to 2, and dinner is 5 to 10. Okay, and where can we park? Uh, you can park in the hotel's garage, okay. and we do validate the parking. And you validate for four hours. perfect for four <laughs> hours. And if you're staying any longer than that, I don't know. I feel like you could go out on a Friday, eat, and go watch the fireworks all under That's four right. hours. Perfect. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for oh, joining us, you guys, and bringing my favorite Japanese food. I love it. All right. Well, coming up next, we'll break down the stories you need to know about today. That's next on Take Two, and just ahead, a new Miss Hawaii USA was crowned last night. Same goes for a teen title. We meet the winners when Take Two returns. You're watching Take Two. Welcome back to It is 845. Welcome back to Take Two. Here are the stories you need to know for today. Well, rain is in the forecast in Northern California, and it could be both helpful and a hindrance in the fight against the wildfires. Rainfall could cause flooding over severe mudslides. 77 people are dead and roughly 1,000 more are still unaccounted for. UFC flyweight Wyanai's Rachel Ostevich has been hospitalized after being the victim of an assault over the weekend. Sources did not reveal details of the incident. Ostevich is scheduled to fight in the UFC's debut event on ESPN January 28th in Brooklyn. Police are warning people of thieves who are swiping packages from people's doorsteps during the holidays. You can have packages delivered to work or a neighbor's house to prevent theft. Also, always stay on top of tracking numbers. If a package is stolen, call police. And the annual turkey trot is coming up on Thanksgiving. The 10-mile course will start at Kapiolani Park and finish on Kalakawa Avenue. The race is set to begin at 7 a.m. For more information, visit our website, k22.com. Lacey Chong! Lay Makamai Freitas! <laughs> Take a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. A new Miss Hawaii USA and Miss Hawaii Teen USA have been crowned. The competition took place just last night at the Hawaii Convention Center. Again, last night. So fresh off of their celebrations, we're joined this morning by the winners, Lacey Choi, Miss Hawaii USA 2019, and Leimaka Mai Fridas, Miss Hawaii Teen USA 2019. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. First off, congratulations. Thank you. What a big feat. And again, this just <laughs> happened. So I know the emotions are still fresh and I'm sure you're feeling it, but how was the whole experience? Oh my gosh, it went by so fast, but I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited, and I'm excited for my year, so. And then where are you guys from, both of you? I'm from Manoa, so I'm I'm from here, born and raised. 
And I'm from Kailo Kona on the Big Island. Oh, Hawaii. Island girl, I love yes. it. Okay, and you guys have been preparing for this pageant for how long was what was the whole prep? How long was it? Hmm. Six months? Six months. Okay. <laughs> Around there. And so for those who don't know, what is the whole process like? Mock interviews, working out, walking practice. I didn't do a pageant before, so it was my first time walking in five and a half inch heels. So it was definitely a learning experience for me, but I had fun. And for me as well, <laughs> I've only been in the pageant industry for a year now. And I really didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually sitting here as your new state title holder. I'm very thankful. And I'm just still trying to sink it all in. Right? <laughs> I mean, again, this is so fresh. And then our very own Trini Kopuiki and Howard Dostoevsky hosted the event last night. And oh, you ladies look so beautiful. So what inspired you to get into this? Why did you decide to do pageant? And what are you hoping to get out of the rest of your year? I decided to run because my auntie actually pushed me to do it. She said it would be a good experience, I would get to meet people, make friends, and I did. I have really close sisters now. I'm, I know I made lifelong friends through this experience, and what I want to get out of this is just learning more about myself. I didn't think I was going to do this. I'm more of a sporty, tomboy kind of girl. I had three brothers growing up, so I was never really a girly girl. So. This is definitely new for me and I'm really excited. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> and then what about you? Well, for me, I speak fluent Hawaiian. I grew oh. up at Kapuna Naleo Kona. And so I really wanted to help make a difference. And with my title, I hope to create the Kako Foundation, a scholarship foundation that I want to create to help bilingual high school students such as myself to have money for college. Because oh. I think that higher education is very important. It is, and that's absolutely <laughs> incredible. I mean, again, our young Miss Teen Hawaii USA already so ambitious. <laughs> I love it. And so, speaking of scholarships, I mean, the Miss Hawaii USA pageant in itself pushes you so much further as well. So, what are you getting out of this? You know, like I said, experience, mm -hmm. and I won the prelim Miss Waikiki. Oh, okay. So, yes. I have another Argosy scholarship from that. Wow prelim and this one. So I got more scholarship, which I'm really excited to use <laughs> to further my education. I'm studying communications right now at UH Manoa, but I'm looking towards online classes at Argosy University. Okay, wonderful. And Argosy <laughs> University, a great friend of ours here as well. And then for the teen pageant, did you guys get scholarships as well? Yes, we wow. did. Thankfully to <laughs> our great sponsor, Argosy University, I was able to have two scholarships as well, one from Hawaii Island and $10,000 from the state pageant. That is absolutely incredible. Well, big congratulations Thank to you. both of you. I'm sure you have an incredible year ahead of you. And you also have to prep for the national pageant, right? Yes. All right, well, great represent, re representation of Hawaii with beautiful girls who just exude aloha. I love it. So happy to have you guys. Thank you. All right, well, Miss Hawaii USA airs right here on K22 on Saturday, December 1st. Our very own Howard Dashevsky and Trini did MC the event, so make sure you check it out. You can see these girls do their thing and work the stage, but they look absolutely beautiful. Can't wait for everyone to see it. Well, thanks so much for joining Thank us this you. morning. Thank you. And again, big congrats. All right, coming up next, so much more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Take Two. Join us for Living 808 this afternoon. We're meeting our new Miss Hawaii USA and Miss Hawaii Teen USA, who you saw just moments ago. Yes, that's right. Uh, Lacey Choi and Leigh Makamai Freitas were just crowned yesterday, as you know. But that is not all. We are also going to show you how to make a vegan treat for Thanksgiving. We're going to learn how to make a vegan ricotta fig cake everyone will love. That's in today's Healthy and Delicious segment with Down to Earth. All that and more this afternoon at 4 o'clock on Living 808 right here on K2. Too. Chris and Kelly, back over to you. Thanks, guys. And Trini, I love the outfit, the sweater. Mm -hmm. Perfect for the cool temps. Makes it feel like fall. All right, well, switching gears now. The latest film from the Harry Potter universe had a fantastic showing at the box office. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald opened this weekend with a take of more than $62 million, but that falls short of the opening of the first film in the series, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. That was in 2016 and debuted with $74 million. Last week's top film, Dr. Seuss, The Grinch, is now in second place, followed by Bohemian Rhapsody, Instant Family, and Widows in the Top 5. And you saw Fantastic Beasts. What'd you think? I did. Um, I liked the 
ending. I just wish that there was more magic throughout the movie. Uh, like okay. I felt like there could have been more magical scenes and bigger scenes. Mm -hmm. Of course the climax is always at the end, you know, the big finish, but I wanted to see more of it throughout. I like the first one better. Oh, so okay. with that, good to yeah. know. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited too. Yes, I think you should still see it okay. and tell me what you I think will. after. I will. All right, thanks for <laughs> watching everyone. Have a great Monday. Aloha everybody, have a beautiful day.